Happy Water Change Wednesday to all you aficionados out there. Oh, I better go soon. That's some thunder. But um, really quick, I've had a lot of questions. People ask me, how do you do water changes on your uh, summer tub and guppy ponds? Well, this is how. It's raining right now. I am under an umbrella. Uh, there's a hole right there drilled for overflow so that uh, this is a basically an automatic top-off system. There's the mystery fish tub. It's getting clear with more plants. There's that's now my fry my, my fry tub and it's uh, currently slowly overflowing. So hopefully this answers your questions. Um, as well as these buckets have holes drilled uh, toward the top so that the water can overflow and go um, and uh, will overflow and it'll be filled up with new fresh uh, rainwater. So I hope this answers your questions. Nice, simple, easy way of doing water changes. Stay tuned. I'm gonna show you. Uh, uh, easy, cheap, free way to uh, leak test your uh, tanks. So that's going to right, So now I am uh, leak checking my 30 gallon tank here that I resealed. Um, I put it as my overflow for my rain barrel. And uh, this way I'm not wasting any water or using any water that I pay for inside. And it's uh, I use this water to go then go fill up the uh, guppy tubs and the summer ponds and everything. This summer tub and guppy ponds there we go but uh yeah so um this thing is obviously holding its seals just fine so it's working i really like it i don't feel bad about wasting water and it's completely free um and it's uh like i said just overflow from my rain barrel which is 32 gallons and overflowing and into 30 gallons so that's 32 62 gallons right there just from uh you know, a few rain showers. So, stay tuned, I'll explain more. All right, so you just watched uh, in the video me showing you how I do water changes um, for my summer tub in 2017 outdoor guppy ponds. Um, and the way I've been doing water changes this summer, water changes, is I just let nature take care of it for me and I just let the rain top off the the uh, tubs and the buckets and uh, have holes drilled in the overflows and the water literally just overflows out and um, the rain tops it off and the fish get fresh water with zero TDS so it's very soft and I know that contradicts my video from earlier this summer which I'll post a link to that right here um, it was from June it was a water change Wednesday video um, and in that video, I talked about how in previous summers, uh, when it gets warm in July and August, I will actually physically scoop the water out and then replenish it with cooler water from my cooler water, mostly shaded rain barrel. Well, the strange thing is, first off, that's one of my highest viewed videos this summer, like at the time of filming, 13,000 views. And, um, which... I wasn't lying in that video in previous summers I it's been so warm and so hot well same thing so hot that I do need to physically scoop the water out and replenish it with cooler water from the cooler shaded rain barrel but the difference is the contradiction this summer the strange thing this summer is that it's been a lot cooler unseasonably cooler and when I say cooler you can probably see the glare on my forehead because you know I'm not wearing concealer or foundation or whatever it is that covers that up um, it's been cooler this summer to the point that most days for the past two weeks I've been noticing since I've been home from a vacation that even on vacation when I was in Myrtle Beach, which is further south, and the week before that even, so really past three weeks, month, I've been noticing temperatures have been in the 80s. Like, mo for the most part, temperature of my, the thermometer in my car has been reading 83 uh, degrees for the most part. Uh, the uh, thermometer's not broken, I do see a change. Um, it reads the same as what my phone is saying at the time when I get out of the car and go inside and check my phone and like, oh, uh, there's there's rain coming, uh, or it's whatever the temperature is. So, 
it's been like 83 degrees on average for the past few weeks, which some of you, that might sound really warm, like people in Alaska, or like your uh, Canada, I know that sounds like crazy warm to you, or uh, people in Maine, that's wicked, wicked warm, right? But uh, down here, that's unseasonally cool. Most summers, the summers I remember growing up, when I grew up, I, I still haven't grown up yet, I remember summer temperatures in August and July, you know, upper 90s, 100s. Uh, one summer I was at camp for the week, and we actually, that was during a time when we were breaking a record of most consecutive days above 100 degrees. I think we went like 19 days or something, something crazy like that. Which people down in like Arizona like fish in the corner. Um, that to you, that's, that's nothing. But anyways, so I remember Growing up back in my day, I remember a lot warmer weather. Even in recent summers, in recent years, last year, year before last, a few summers ago before that, it's been in the 90s at least. I can't tell you when the last time it was I saw 90 uh, degrees. Um, well, I can, it was like back in June when I was doing that physical water change scooping the water out and pouring cooler water in. Well, the other pattern that's been happening this summer that's different from other summers is it's been raining or storming every two weeks. A few summers ago, probably about seven years ago when I was a lifeguard at, at a daycare, which is where I credit getting my a lot of my classroom experience from, I was a lifeguard at a pool awesome job it was a three foot three feet all the way across if a kid was drowning i said put your feet down that was it it's an awesome job i had awesome bosses um kids were pretty good uh the worst thing that happened while i was lifeguard there was a kid got a, a busted chin from jumping and twisting and which that never happened again obviously anyways i digress so that summer it was like florida like david Betancourt. Um, it was like Florida every day at about four o'clock or so it would rain or storm for about 20 minutes and then it would break and then it would cool off. I was like, great, we're getting Florida weather. It's awesome. And then, you know, for the, for the past few summers it's been, in recent summers, it's been raining or storming about every few days. Well, this summer it's been raining or storming about once every two weeks. Uh, today, earlier today, um, it was like a monsoon. I was like, do I live in a rainforest? I mean, what is going on here? It, I looked outside, I literally thought I was watching like some video from like Vietnam movie, um, Apocalypse Now, whatever, Forrest Gump. Yeah, I was, I was picturing Forrest Gump. There's all, I learned there was all kinds of rain, stinging rain, little big old fat rain. It even rained at night. Well, today was the big old fat rain. Oh my gosh, it was it was just coming down in buckets. It was ten gallonfuls, which, by the way, it's my daughter's ten gallon tank on every show. So, um, bucketfuls, ten gallon fish tankfuls of rain today. Crazy rain. Like if my rain barrels weren't already full, they would have been filled up in like five minutes today. Um, you also saw earlier my overflow, my 30 gallon overflow uh, leak te testing. Well, it, it it held, and then it still overflowed. So I'm, but I'm out of buckets. I'm out of, um, out of buckets. I'm, I'm out of tubs. Tubs I have at Walmart right now are black. I I don't want that kind of heat going into my uh, my, my tanks. So I don't know that would absorb the light and the heat, and that would not be good. So, so anyways, uh, today was. It also rained, I think. When was the last time it rained? It wasn't a few days ago, it was probably almost a week ago, but before that it was every few weeks. But it's just kind of strange to see how the weather patterns have changed and that's part of keeping fish outdoors. You have to be aware of the weather and the patterns and adapt to those patterns and be what be ready to have a plan so my plan this summer has been a really easy summer because 
temperatures hadn't been that high, so the water temperature hadn't been that high, and it's in the shade for most of the day, like after 12.30 every day. So, um, it has higher amounts of oxygen, so it's better for the fish. So, uh, some summers when it's really hot, I have to do more work. I have to physically scoop the water out and pour cooler water back in. Uh, that's kind of a lesson I'm learning, and this is only my second summer of um, keeping fish outdoor in uh, summer tubs. Um, I've learned from this summer, I think change I'll make next year, I was talking about it on my live stream on Monday night with um, Rob Hicks. Um, next summer we want to try uh, aquaponics, and I might try to grow some like little lettuce or some, some spinach and see how that grows floating, and uh, figure that whole setup out. I might try that next summer. But what I learned this summer, and I kind of learned halfway through the summer, is definitely the importance of floating aquatic plants. Water lettuce, dwarf water lettuce, frog bit, um, lots of uh, duckweed is another good one. It's cleared up in the water, it's cooled off the water, it's added oxygen, it's it's great. Great for, for the fry to hide in. Um, but uh, on that note, I'll talk about that later, but... Uh, so yeah, that's what I learned from this summer and a change I made this summer. Next summer I'll make other changes. I'll hopefully get some more tubs when they get a different color in. Um, right now mine are blue and that's as dark as I want to go. I don't want to heat up my my uh, my water that much. That might be great for like early season or late season tubbing, but there there's no sense in that. So um, next summer hopefully have more tubs. Next summer hopefully have uh, aquaponics, so stay tuned for that. Um, if you are watching this video in the future, like summer of 2018, then hopefully I'm doing that um, and learn from my uh, mistakes. But point of this video is my plan in June was to do as the same as in summers past and have to physically scoop the water out and replenish it with cooler water. But what ended up happening was a much easier system. So if you found this video uh, informative or educational or enjoyable, well, thank you. Uh, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you didn't, get a thumbs down, but let me know below in comments of what you would like to see different or any questions or comments you have or or whatever. Um, be sure to uh, subscribe and turn on uh, notifications so you can know of any updates I do with my summer tubs or water change Wednesday because eventually, in about a month or so, I will be taking the summer tubs down and I'll be seeing how many fry I have. Um, so, make sure you stay tuned for that. We'll start with this tank really quick before I go, though. It's my daughter's 10-gallon tank. She got it for her third birthday. Um, I'm actually letting the diatom algae grow on purpose right here. I'm proud of the fact that it has two uh, German blue rams in there. I'm not proud of the fact that it has three glowfish in there, which is what my daughter wanted for her birthday. Though the interesting story is, is that it started off with six glowfish. And then mysteriously, mysteriously, literally mysteriously, down to three of them now. I look around, I don't see any dead fish. We move this, this the what it's the what the tank is on, away to paint this wall. You like the paint color in the background? I know. My daughter loves it. Move it away to paint. Look underneath of there, no dead or dried up fish. Look in the filter. No dead fish. Look around everything. I mean, I moved everything. No dead fish. I really don't know where the fish went. They disappeared. I mean, my daughter wakes up in the morning, can I feed the fish? Before she takes a nap, can I feed the fish? Before she goes to bed every night, can I feed the fish? Like, we look at this tank three times a day at least. I did not ever see the fish. They literally just disappeared. So, kind of crazy. Um, also, another interesting fact, the sponge that I have on the intake, I don't know if it's because the pink wall is so pink that, like, that's what it looks like, but that sponge is, like, originally, it's like a yellowish-white, it's like an off-white color, and yet now it looks as pink as the wall. I mean, is it, like, absorbing the paint? color it's crazy yeah it's 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 a uh, aquion 
one of those sponges that you put into one of those uh, Aquion power filter sponge is what it is. So look at the color of that naturally. And that's what that sponge is, but yet it's pink here. It's crazy. Also doing a little experiment with this Java fern here. Usually my daughter likes her tank in pink light. You see here, that also might be, I mean, it could be algae on there that's turning pink because of the light. I don't know. But my experiment has been to see if the java fern will grow in uh, pink light. Uh, the fish don't seem to mind. Um, but uh, testing to see on the java fern because java fern grows pretty easily. So testing it out. But for the sake of this video and my manhood in this video, I kept the light white. I like the blue, personally, to be honest. I mean, but that's the normal glowfish color, and I don't like glowfish, so. For the, this video, we'll do white. So, anyways. Um, yeah, pink sponge. I, I, I'm i gonna have to take the sponge out and look at it under, like, natural daylight away from this pink wall and see if it really is pink, and. And then maybe test it to see if it's because of the pink lighting or the pink wall and do an experiment. So that might be a later video. So comment below if you'd be interested in that. So let me know. Hope you enjoyed this. If you stayed this long, you are way more awesome than I am. So good job. Thumbs up to you. Um, that's it. We stay fishy, people.